welcome back to Toronto Mobile Developers live stream. Today we're going to be working on some continuation of what we did last time. So last time we took the Rate the Meat app. This was uh, an app that was developed uh, about a little over a year ago at BSI Labs, a company I used to work for. And it was developed as kind of a playground app to experiment with a bunch of different technology and, and get a uh, real life app with real users in the app store. As we were doing that, uh, I mean, uh, have our own app in the store that we could kind of experiment with. And uh, also experiment with different pieces of technology and things like that. Had some mixed results. Um, ultimately, it was very difficult to to get it staffed for you this evening. Um, just kind of giving some background on the app before I pour a beer here. Just might as well pour a beer to get started. All right, so today, this one is Chizumu. It's a Come on, camera. You can do it. West Coast IPA. Godspeed. It's got some really nice um, art on the can. A little uh, Bayside ocean scene. It says Shizumu in like Hollywood style letters. So this is a West Coast IPA. It clocks in at 7.4%. Um, so yeah, background on Rate the Meat. Hard to staff um, just because it was, uh, of course, client work, billable work takes priority. Hard to staff, so it kind of became like abandonware. We were using it for uh, the meetup our actual events but there was some it needs some improvements needed some love and we had no way to give it that love so now it's open source it's a nice looking beer cheers everybody cheers john that's good um so made it open source and um hey emily so made the app open source. Um, I didn't. I didn't end up committing or pushing the the Blazor side yet because it needs some more cleanup. Uh, and, then the, and that's basically where we left things. We cleaned up, checked things, did a bit of review, left things in a, a decent state, got the the actual mobile pieces and the API ready, and then we brought over the Tara Saud. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that that name correctly, but hey. Um, so we basically left off with, we have all the mobile stuff on GitHub. So that's all ready to go. And now we're gonna start looking at the Blazor side. Um, started doing a bit of cleanup on it, and I did a bit more cleanup the other night. I think, I can't remember which night it was. I know last night or, or Sunday night. Um, needs a little more. So at least it'll build and run now, so. Actually demo that now. So one of the things I was doing, I was trying to F5 debug um, last session. That's not going to work for us. So I'm going to do a .NET run from here. So product projects, and then we'll do a .NET run. Actually, hold on. I need Builds and runs? Ship it? Ship it, you say? Hold on, let's see if I can do this right. Come on. There it is. There's Clippy. Nice. Um, yeah, pretty much. It builds, it runs, but it doesn't do shit. And everything was um, like hard, code, hard coded in. So it 
doesn't really do much at this point, but um, that's what we're going to do. So if we look at last time, uh, we reviewed it. We made sure the secrets and cleanup was completed, which it was. Awesome. Uh, we committed it to the public repo, and we didn't do anything on the backlog wish list yet. Made some notes here on... Some of the pieces in the root directory, so some a default GitHub Actions YAML is at the root. Script in places for audit tr triggers, like just the update of that field. And then we made note of all the packages. This is going to be good for documentation, kind of tracking what needs to be uh, lost. What's the date today? It's March, forever March, infinity. What's happening? Forever March. Particularly forever March in Toronto where the weather has not been cooperating at all. It's terrible in fact. I do the first thing I want to go. Okay. Uh, really unfortunate. All the data that was part of the app, gone. Whatever. It is what it is. Um, so we'll mock that for a so talk to the back end. Um, we want a mocked backend within the app or a, a mocked API. I think it's using refit. Maybe not, but anyway, and that'll also be useful for some of our testing that we'll do. So that's good. Um, yeah, that's like really our, let's mock some services. here cool. all right so where was i here so oh yeah i was gonna run it i have to browse so post 5001 is that right yeah there again it'll navigate but nothing works it's just I'm gonna puke every time i try and do anything with it because there's no backend and everything's hard-coded even if there was a back end, we wouldn't be able to talk to it. Um, because we've got stale, like just some stale tokens hard coded in. We basically made this um, some really. Emily built this in her co op term. Which was cool. Because uh, I wouldn't have a lot of chance to touch Blazor just on my own time. When I was working at BSI, things were hectic. I was spending a lot of time on all kinds of company and uh, get some good progress made. See, look, there's an access token right here. Uh, made some good progress with this, and then uh, we would pair up when she ran into issues and kind of work through some things. And we got to the point where I would, you know, do some basic, basic things in a demo. Um, never got it finished because, again, services business you're constantly looking at like what are you billing it's tricky tricky getting that balance we had used up all this is talk um so it goes to i assume that's mapped to current survey yep so current surveys page is going to it's really cool how um like kudos and hats off to the PRISM team because, wow, doesn't this look familiar? On initialized async. So familiar. Okay, so basically we're now trying to, we're reading the cookie, which has the access token in it. So this is already, I think this is still, um, using, uh, Security best practices and OAuth, OAuth best practices for a single page application. Um, I am not super up to date on those. Not at all. That that token in a cookie, but I, I don't know, I could be completely wrong. Okay, so it's adding some request header. I'm using some of the, I think it would choke, blow up, show what's going on with that. So I basically want to see where we surveys elsewhere in the app. 
this should be interesting to try and find this. Search for surveys. This is where I want Ryder open. Oof. Okay, so I can already narrow this. So I want to find this in CS files only. C sharp files. I don't care about the razor code. Survey service, though it's probably behind that, isn't it? Survey service. I'm not sure how this is structured, so yeah, here we go. Isn't this great? Look at iAPI client. Perfect. It's user refit. Amazing. That's fantastic. So I'm pretty sure this didn't this iAPI client wouldn't properly, wouldn't have worked properly with, uh, no, that should have worked. Let's, okay, let's bring this in. So we should have an implementation, of, or this generates our implementation. And so we can register this. It's part of our DI. So let's actually look at Look at where it's where it's being used here. Hmm. Well, these are refit stubs, so this is the generated class. Okay. So I think we actually want to use this client factory here. factory. We'll look at both these. So this is monkey cache being initialized or actually being configured. Hmm. HTTP tracer in here. Awesome. and then this is our our rest service here so back is being referenced directly in here uh, because of auto effects I started it hmm. okay, might have to might have to deal with our own implementation of this to simplify things. I am not familiar with the iStartable interface of Autopack. So, okay, when implemented by a component, an instance of the component will be resolved and started as soon as a container is built. Autopack will not call the start method when subsequent instances are resolved. If this behavior is required, use an unactivated event handler instead. So are we using the start method in here? We are, but I don't really understand how this is working. So, what is this doing? It's checking. We looked at this last time too, and I was like, what is happening here? So, so it's basically when start is running. Okay, so if, if the API base URL URI API changes, that's coming from app settings. So if app settings base URI, we're gonna sync client instances what's being used throughout the app. I'm very intrigued by how this is actually working. I think I am going to just cut this right down. Hmm. So it's basically waiting on this log and this code. This 
this has something to do with the timing of the I startable being executed. Making it thread safe for initialization or the startup using Rx. I don't know if this is a common pattern or not, but this is confusing for me. So to me, this looks like um, this looks like something Alan Ritchie might have written. Okay, so we got our first note. This might be um, something I can ask Alan about. Data implementation, HTTP client factory. Or sorry, API client factory. Okay, so that's our code. Alright, so we're going to ask. I'm going to just ask Alan. That's our first actually want to do is so we have a REST service for HTTP client or for API client and then we're initializing it with our API client. So this has a couple things going on. Um, Racer. And then we have a handler builder. Hmm. It's a custom class as well. Tracer in it, I'm sure. Um, a couple things to clean up in here. Might as well, might as well do that. Remove the API client. That's confusing. It's not used. This is, let's take a look at what this is doing. Put the profile. Oh, I assume this is something that's storing the, the user profile data in a cache somewhere. Let's find an implementation of that. Another implementation in the web app in the Blazor front end, so we'll take a look at that in a minute. I understand the theory of it, I understand marble diagrams. Uh, in practice, the RX API I'm not familiar with. So when I start looking at RX code, I'm generally pretty confused, just as a default, which is fun. Sign in. So what was that code doing back here? Actually, it was in our, let's change the order of this. So it's calling get user. So what does get user do? Let's take a look at our get user method. I don't know why I'm navigating like a caveman in that get user. So get pretty straightforward stuff. So we look for the user back as essentially nothing. Whoops. We have closed tab. Oh no, I didn't want that. It's not even want to close. Oh, I reordered. I pinned it. I see. One error click. Uh, okay, so it is, no, this is back to looking at our C 
sync lock. This is looking for a user account. If the user account is not null, checks the token expiry and refreshes the token if it's expired. Then it sets the auth header to the access token. Cool. Pretty standard. funny using this retried flag so I guess some things might have a might have some retry logic okay something to make note of we probably don't need this exactly we can probably just use a basic um, we don't even want to go this low level we're looking at things now I, I just realized I'm down a rabbit hole already. I don't care about HTTP right now at all. We don't care about how it's how it's calling the API because we're going to mock that to search results. When we search for surveys, all of this good stuff. Um, let's go look at that. Blazor app is we're actually registering this already uh, right now I think we're just gonna leave this as is and we're gonna mock all of this so it's gonna be mock survey service and let's just start generating some code and that's gonna be implementing I survey service space implement it and we got all our stuff all right so this is just going to do nothing but make noise because it's throwing exceptions uh, so let's actually get to the point where we want to where we can mock some of this have it return to some hardcore point all right So I think we'll, so what does this do? It calls the surveys, so it gets the surveys. So that's the first thing we want to do. There's a weird indentation it gave me. Our uh, survey, survey service. I'm gonna inject that, inject. Survey service. Nice. Like I said, this was done with a lot of haste. Um, okay, so we're gonna get get surveys, which will get our list of surveys. So we can come down to about here, where it's getting the survey list. Really, all this goes away because that was just so we could actually make a real call and get live data. I don't know why we didn't mock this from the get go. Emily, are you still watching? Why, why didn't we do this like this from the word go? Okay. Parameters. Not sure. Put a to do in there. This indenting is a little. Emily, why didn't we mock it? That's the studio persistent. 
Emily, do you have any idea why or what the uh, the force refresh is used for on get on get Okay, so we'll have to determine that. Ah. Uh, so the the data was already kept in the app. Here because because of some questionable choices. I'm pretty sure none of those the survey service and all those those HTTP and API services would not have worked at all in Blazor at the point because there was no there was no there was certainly no reactive UI support and I think I don't know if it, there was any reactive UI dependencies in there but. Um, certainly reactive anyways it doesn't matter it doesn't matter and now we've got this so let's put together some mock survey data in our survey list if only we had a real endpoint I could actually just pull JSON down from if only sad all right so first we're going to return uh, task dot task for now with the intention of moving it later on because we're going to need it. Surveys. Okay, so let's add, uh, I guess I don't need the type, it's implicit. Cool, so surveys.add uh, new survey. just an int, number of entries, entry count, group, group ID, name, has completed, ID, name, prizes, questions. This is at the point where I'm like, you know, even some writer would be really fast. I guess from the command line anyways, maybe I should just switch over to Rider. Maybe that's the better move here. Uh, okay, I think I have to load this up. Nope. No surprise. Um, Loaded on the wrong display. I think I've said this before. I have. I don't think I've ever had uh, an application load on the right display in in my history of using Mac OS, which is just. Okay. Platforms meet. And we're looking at our survey services. I'm just going to collapse the solution here. So I need both the exact 
exact same spot we were just working in the new studio. I wish I had uh, more viewers. <laughs> Does anybody watching have a good way of generating based on a class, uh, like a, a class hierarchy. Anyone? Because what I'd really like to do is instead of writing this, this ad code, where I knew, like, I'm one step closer, um, oops, one step closer in Rider, because I can do things like, John. Yeah, isn't it something that would be really good to have something like that? So I, you know, I was deep, right? I'm still stuck with doing that manually too. And days minus one. Archive. False. This is where we start getting into, oh, the, no, this is just an int. So entries, we'll say there's 10 entries, group name, test group. Group ID, one. New. Group DTO. So this is, again, onerous, right? So let's see, let's see if there's usages with this. So in, group is admin, so it's checking the is admin flag. That's what we're looking at. This music is, uh, All right, so we're just looking at the is admin flag, it looks like. I hope that's it. I assume it's being bound to in the, in the Xamarin app as well. Okay, Ryder, it's a little bound. Yeah, so it's mostly the is admin flag, so maybe let's just cheat. Just ignore everything except the is admin flag. And for our Prizes, so this is going to be another collection. List of prizes. I don't think we used this on the survey page, so I don't know if I care about that. And then same with these questions, so I think we'll just leave that blank for now. We're going to have to come back to this stuff. Okay, so now we've got some mocked out surveys. So now in current surveys, we'll now pull from our survey service, our mock survey service. We know we're not going to hit any, so that's all good. Cool, let's do this. Okay, so let's save. Back to our command line. Cool, so there's our test survey. So that's good stuff. That's that's helpful. One step closer to having something 
looking somewhat functional. What is next? So the next thing, let's go to our actual survey detail page. All right, so survey page. Let's take a look at that one. So go to this. Survey page. When Emily was experimenting with this, because I think it started experimenting with this with like preview two or three and it was like trying to hit a moving target with a lot of this stuff and uh, every time a new preview would come out it would be like okay well now we get to redo all this code now none of this works let's try this like lots of rework Survey service, get survey, survey ID. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna need to do, this actual list, uh, let's refactor this into a field. And let's initialize this in, yeah, let's give it a field constructor, field initializer, well, before we do that, let's do this. Use a collection initializer. And then we will move it to a field. Underscore surveys. And we're going to do a field initializer. Now what we can do is that too, copy this, do a link query. Surveys, single, x.surveyid.id equals survey ID. Cool, so then we've got that mocked. Wonder if there's a quick and easy way to restart. at build. Um, one thing I should mention, there is a .NET conference starting tomorrow. So JetBrains, who makes Rider, has a, a little uh, two-day, oh my god, it does not like my resolution at all. I mean, like I can't blame it. I don't like my resolution either. Bunch of interesting topics from what I've seen. JetBrains, uh, JetBrains hires some very, very smart people. And they have some good products. So what do we got? Refactoring to patterns. Gang of four. Martin Fowler. Factoring, basically applying patterns to existing code. Yield return, async streams. Oh, that's particularly relevant. C sharp to Python. I mean, um, I should really pay more attention to. Starting a blog. Static site generator. 
building a blogging platform using a static site generator. Free online services coming up with ideas for other content. This is a good one. John said is definitely looking forward to some of those talks. Refactoring patterns is super interesting. Yeah. Me too, man. Looks like there's good stuff in here. GRPC for ASP.NET. GRPC is like the hotness right now. This one is something I would watch and it'll go right over my head because even this, just this title, learning F sharp by designing your own language. Huh? What? Web APIs with ASP. I haven't actually looked. Interesting. Anybody touched AWS? I have not done anything with AWS. Dapper, this is really interesting. I did a little POC with um, do object, object mapping with the overhead of the framework. Emily, yeah, you did the whole um, AWS clinic, right? Like crash course. So John and Emily, you've both done, you've both done AWS. John, you, says, you say it's a bit painful, but awesome. How do you compare it to Rider or if Rider? How do you compare AWS to Azure? I'm interested. Um, I never see like, I haven't, I haven't seen any good like side-by-side -side contrast comparisons. Hot chocolate, oh yeah, hot chocolate is the uh, GraphQL package. So there you go, John. Emily agrees. Painful but awesome. Cool. So there's some good stuff in there. I'm gonna definitely, uh, definitely keep that kind of going in the background tomorrow, at the very least. All right, back into it. That was a good little brain break. Says the guy drinking a beer, screwing around with code. Yeah, that's what led me on that that train. I was thinking about build. Hopefully, it's they'll have some. Uh, there. So, percent. Also, like considering loading is because we had that commented out, and in our survey service, we have no questions. Question. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. Like the thing is, again. much better at a reasonable resolution. Oops. Test question. Instead of test question one, rename the survey to test survey one. And this, I think this was using GUIDs as the IDs. Order one. All right. Starts our, our question mocking. Um, well, yeah, order should be it. See if there's, there's something I can do about getting this. Okay, so now we have data, but let's see. For each question in question, this should go well. Content. 
So carousel, that's a carousel. But then nothing renders after that. Carousel inner. So carousel exists. So it doesn't like something we're doing in here. Let's try... For shit. Uh, is this a block comment or what? I assume it is. This makes me question, like, so they... Been some changes to some of these how some of these razor pages are maybe we'll see okay so I'm gonna get rid of let's maybe know that we we're trying to buy this even further so instead of let's just let's do another hard coded Text here. Hello, world. Hey, Lachlan. How is it going? Uh, Lachlan, I think I didn't catch your stream the other night. Or an app to Blazer. Block commenting has always been iffy like this. Oh, you can't hear me? Thanks for letting me know. Try and get it closer to my face at the very least. Music is loud. Weird. I'm. It, all my settings seem to be. Whoops. A um, little out of whack today. Okay. I like. I turned it down too, but I don't. I can't really tell if it was louder or quieter. Cool. Thanks. Thank you for that. It's funny when settings kind of get knocked around, even though you haven't touched anything. Who knows? Let's blame Apple. I like blaming Apple for my problems. Everybody else seems to really like Spotify. Personally, I can't stand Spotify. I wonder why people like it. Um, its playlists are terrible. And it seems to cling on to like... It doesn't have very good algorithm for... Um, for understanding... Understanding. Doesn't have very good... Apple Music, John. Oh. Okay. Okay. Lachlan, you're on Google Play Music. What are you going to cancel and get? I know they're they're going to try and push this all to YouTube, right? I think that's that's garbage because I have a I tried YouTube Music and it's it, it's not good. I what are they doing? Google. I don't want to give Apple any more money either. Both those companies. I use Play Music constantly, all day, every day. I have the earliest receipt I could find in my email. Um, you could upload your music. So I had a, a whole bunch of music on my uh, network attached, attached storage, and I just put it all in Google Play Music and then listen to it from there. And plus, everything that I didn't have, 
they had. So it's great. I loved it. There we go. And then, um, like, they expanded their collection. They bought, um, what was that, Songza? And their their prediction, their radio algorithm got really good. So creating the algorithm. Yeah, so you, John, uh, Lachlan says you can still do that with your personal music locker. Like, that's fantastic. It's a really good feature, really underrated feature. And the playlists, the the radio stations, you can build on a single song or an artist. That's hard to beat. They do it does a really really good job of that. Oh, what do we got here? Um. So, yeah, I'm frustrated that's going away. Lachlan, um, I'm glad you're. But um, it's the the app experience is really bad from what I found. Like I give it a shot when it, they announced it. I think it was about a year ago. Um, my wife and I sat down and I think for a whole evening, both of us grabbed the, the YouTube app and we're, we're experimenting with it. And it just was not great. Lachlan, I'm on Wasm. I Blazor server is not for me because I mean there's a lot of good use cases for it, but I don't know. I want a true front end. I want a rich front end running C sharp that I can treat the same as my mobile app. Use all the same great patterns and good stuff. Well, not same patterns, but you know, um, have offline caching and have all kinds of like PWA goodness. Are you running Wasm on yours, the app that you're building? I don't know why this question.name is not rendering. Does my question not have a name? No, it has a name. Test question one. Oh, <laughs> here's the problem. Ah, my mocked question data is not here. What do I call that? Underscore question. Yes. So, um, Mostly Wasm. Let's move this all to the constructor. So how do you do your Lachlan? How do you um, deal with reloading? So at work, you use Blazor server. Oh, cool. So you get to actually, you're working hands-on with it at work. That must help in, as you're working on the WASM stuff too. What did I just do there? Blue wave. challenge on stream with server because debugging is better. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I was going to ask about. Like, um, what do you use for, how, what does your inner dev loop look like? So how do you deal with uh, re refreshing, like getting new changes into the browser? Because I'm constantly having to do this. At work, I'm mostly Xamarin, Xamarin devs, and other do Blazor, but I pick up a card here and there. Ah, uh, I see. So you're using VS Mac. So if you're using VS Mac, what happens when you make changes? Oh, it has the terminal built in. Well, okay, so. Yeah, I'm being stupid is what you're saying. which I am, that's fair. Okay, so there. <laughs> riders, riders, let's quit run again. Okay, so that's the loop. That's what it is. Hey, there's our test question. 
holy shit, it only took me, what, 10 minutes to figure out that I was, I didn't have it in the right place. This is the thing about not having a good debugging experience. On VS Windows, you can just stop, start. Well, maybe that's, see, this is the, this is the challenge with using one machine for streaming, right? Because if I try and load up, anyways, I think what I'll do is, um, I think I'll do some research on if there's anything out there that can, can help with this. I mean, I've got a live sharp license. Maybe that's that you're using chime in. Yeah. How is it though? How is WASM debug in VS windows? Have you actually worked with it? Because you're supposed to have WASM debug um, when I worked with it before, and Emily and I found that it was not very good. To host your WASM inside .NET Core server for debug. Interesting. Yeah. Right, you can still deploy plain web to experiment with between now and Saturday. Okay, so let's kill this again. It's fairly limited, so you don't bother. Yeah, it's too bad. I think until the it's pretty solidly a non starter. This reminds me of coding. Basically, like not a, like you didn't have much of a debugging experience, so it was basically like just print, print statements. Hey, look, we got some survey stars and a text box. Now I'm curious. I'm actually gonna do clone this tab, move it to my other screen. I feel like, I don't know. I guess at a hundred percent, it looks the way it's supposed to look. It lo starts looking odd when I'm zoomed way out. So Lachlan, what I think is a good idea, but haven't tried yet is to use a Blazor server project and Blazor WASM project in the solution that reuse all the same files. Ah. So you can do 90, 90 plus percent of your debugging in Blazor server, which has a good debug experience, then publish WASM. That is a good idea. That's a really good idea. Hmm. Okay. Your messages into my into my tasks here. <laughs> Hope you don't mind. Sounds like a good way to do things. Next Melbourne meetup, Rod is doing a presentation on advanced blazer. When is that? Um, maybe I'll sign myself up right now. Hey, look. Oh, you changed it. Dialog about whether to expand or not because it's uh inside goss <laughs> nice okay well you know what i'm gonna do is this is my this is the to mobile dev session but i'm gonna join your group keep my ear to the ground um 
Yeah, we've been back and forth on whether to expand because the other the other .NET groups in the city, like in Toronto here, no longer talk about .NET C Sharp. They only talk about Azure. Um, and it's, uh, or not only, mostly. You've rebranded four times this year. So what, it, what have been the iterations? Tell me about it. I'm, I'm very intrigued. Okay, so we got our question list loading. Can I swipe between these questions? They're both kind of overlaying here. So I think there's something up with um, what we're using or trying to use for a, a carousel there. I want to hear your iterations. Uh, Toronto group. How, how's Amarin and Blazer? Only three? How long has your, been, your group been active? Do you know off the top of your head? Because I know... Uh, I was looking for a browser window that got lost. Have a good one, John. See you next time, hopefully. As I've become distracted, you're probably not entertained at this point anyways. Long happened <laughs> was running it. Kim joined Meetup in 2014, but like, I mean, I've, I think I've been on Meetup for, I don't know, a very long time ago. Oh, you started streaming about a year ago. Interesting. I wonder if uh, Clinton Rocksmith, I'm not sure if I know who that is. It's interesting. User group stuff is fun. And uh, I've been talking to the organizers of TO Mobile Dev. So Daniel, Emily, Andrew, talking about trying to get our our meetups back on track with more of a meetup format. And uh, TO Mobile Devs would become like the traditional meetup. And maybe like we talked about like having a round to our fun here this page so let's make a let's make a task list here so this is our Kim was co-host and Clinton ran away self sounds now and then when he's in the state uh, so he moved No, you know what? I like the distractions. That's what this is all about, right? These, uh, these, um, these live streams are, are informal and fun and it's good to chat. Uh, okay. So there's an issue. I found the backup here. I think I best in breed for blazer is I think Syncfusion, I I could use Syncfusion in the Xamarin apps as well. That would be cool. Okay, so I think we're done with this page. Cool. This is, this is going. Good stuff. Um, let's see what else. Let's just, let's actually navigate through the app. I think that's a good way to go. Lachlan, big part of my inner dev loop with anything CSS to make the changes in Chrome dev tools for instant feedback and then add them to my real from dev tools that it's uh, serious on the web. Okay, let's move on to archived. Archive. This is going to be about the same as what we just saw, isn't it? 
So we need a public survey list. Cool. I think it's pretty easy to get that uh, the Chrome tools hooked up to your your local project. I can't quite remember how to do it. Eject I survey service. Bring our back in the day doing ASP.NET MVC. If you edit CSS in Visual Studio, it instantly update the browser. Yeah. Yeah, you know, sometimes it just feels like we're moving backwards, doesn't it? So many ways. Not necessarily just um, just code. Just tech life. Uh, false. And then this is the force refresh, so... Simpler times. The before times is what I've been calling them, Lachlan. The before times. You know, in the before times, we could go outside. Because we don't have a pull to force update. We don't have pull to refresh on, on web. We have like a hard page refresh, but definitely got to get our, get that straight, what we're doing. Like our logging here, console right line, good times. Clearly need some logging work too. So I think this should just be good to go. Oh, I know I can fix this. Oh no, that was terrible. Let's see it's so ugly i hope they uh i can't recall if uh c sharp 8 has anything to deal with that it's killing me before i can go go back to Archive surveys is bringing nothing back. Is it bringing nothing back? I add some motion. Mock. So in our survey service, we'll add another one in here. And I think what we'll do with, we'll make test survey two, one that hasn't completed, test survey one will have completed. And it makes, it's a little more, um, okay. This flow, there's, I'm definitely going to experiment with the, uh, because this dev flow is, awkward cool there's our archive survey so we navigated to it got some star ratings i don't know if there's there's some broken things on this page so the actual survey page How do we submit? And then what else did we have? I didn't click a lot of these things on here. 10 entries, nothing. So this is all just taking us to the survey page. Okay, good. This shows it has prizes. I think this is about the same. Okay. Cool. Oh, and we're pointing to the same questions too. So let's actually go back and let's fix up that mock data a little bit. 
close this. Quit, quit our app from running. So this is... Survey ID 2, survey ID... Actually, undo this. I'm going to name these questions S1, Q1. S1, Q2. And we'll create another set. Whoops. Forget a comma. Uh, you forget a comma and the world ends. Okay, so now this is going to be ID 2. This is or ID 3. I could count that would probably help me survey two yeah we'll just leave it at that two and this is four survey two question two survey ID two and really these are just two sets of questions so really in our here we'll do questions where oops where um we want to filter this so the xamarin source is public um the blazer source is not there yet xamarin source there's no out of the blazer source and then i'll i'll post that so that's why I'm going through each one of these pages and making sure it's mocked to the point where it'll run. Doing the housekeeping. Oh well, it doesn't matter. It'll come. There's there's no rush, no hurry for any of this. Survey ID, and then There's no way that would work, would it? Expired act, it doesn't really matter. All right, I have to call to list. To and yeah, we'll just do to list. Super sensitive, it's just really sloppy if we committed something like that, right? So that's, that's really what I'm trying to avoid is is getting sloppy to the point of embarrassment. <laughs> um, they've moved my cheat. Used to be a button that would take you to the open file in here. I don't know where it is now. Okay, so archive is good. That should really get us what we want. Lachlan says on on my travel monkey stream, I was so careful to hide all the Azure tokens and then committed the file and opened a pull request to Gerald. And what's the punchline? There was all the keys were in there. Assume that's what's coming. You almost like have to use something like token replacement um, from day one. It's too bad, man. So did you have to go and what did you do? Did you force push? <laughs> I don't even know what we do with your keys. Okay, so what do we got going? We have our we have an archive survey. 
So archive is showing us our completed survey from two days ago. Home is showing us our current survey, which is not completed from yesterday. My groups. So this pulls from, well, this pulls from the uh, our API, but our API calls meetup and does some caching. The meetup API is um, like a ha occupational hazard, I think is a, is a good way of describing it. The meetup API, uh, they change it. It's not, it's not very good company. You hit a limit. Yeah, that's not. So here it is. This is the, this is the bad stuff right here where we're setting off headers using a, a hard coded. It's not even a hard coded, uh, API key. It's, it's, it's an access token. So like, I don't, I don't really care. So the groups list were, so let's see what we got. So I think it's a meetup service. I meet up. I'm casing here, Lachlan, when you inject, are you using capitalization like title case on your variables? curious like all this is so it's so new to me and uh oh meetup service doesn't have a something else must be i need another beer oh excuse me meetup auth service Survey service, account service, user tasks. Hmm. Oh, no way. Oh, no. Okay, good. There's Fox in here, but they're not implemented. <laughs> I was ready to hurt myself. Pascal case over camel case for everything except for local variables and backing fields. Do you like underscore for your backing, your member member variables, private members? I like underscore. A lot of this code was written by or influenced by Alan Ritchie and Alan likes this. And I said, those are four keystrokes you'll never get back. Every time you use this, this is like part of the uh, .NET coding standard, right? And then uh, some of the things that I see, this is like a Java thing, kind of. This came over, anybody who used um, nHibernate uh, knew about the implementation suffix. I'm not a fan. I know like it. Um, it's crazy that I, that there is a survey service here in the mocks that has nothing in it. I don't want to start moving stuff to it though. Inject HTTP client, HTTP client. Okay. So that's, yeah, that's what, um, Ryder is suggesting. You can do can you you can do constructor injection in your code behind with uh, with Razor your Razor code behind. I did not know that. This is like learning. Um, account service. Get token. Get user. Meetup auth service. User tasks. How are so you can do constructor injection? That's super interesting. In the code block, yeah, I, I would assume that code block is the same as you can use a public constructor, I assume. Groups, one usage. 
Okay. Well. I don't need to bring in anything new. Yeah, I need to do some homework on on Razor. IntelliSense is much must fat much, much faster in a C sharp file. Good to know. I think Rider is um I think Rider wins in uh in IntelliSense. So I don't know if it has the same problems. Just because by default significantly better. Do you use Rider at all, Lachlan? I am uh, I'm pretty solidly hooked on it. Myself. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the so you tried a rider a while ago and it confused you. Um you went back to Xamarin Studio. Yeah, um you know there's a couple things about it that are jarring, but for the most part it's uh it just takes you like a couple days and you figure out where everything is. The one thing that constantly gets me is there's no immediate window. And I, it drives me crazy. No immediate window is when you need the immediate window and it's not there. It's so frustrating. Oh, well, what you going to do though, right? What you going to do? Private list group DTO. I think that's what this is returning. Whoops. Group DTO. Let's just double check the return type. Developer in your company. Groups. <laughs> so getting Xamarin Studio and Xcode to play nice was daunting enough. Yeah, you know, I can relate. Uh, it took me a while to get into Rider. But you can, write them, you can run them side by side. You can even have the project open or your solution open in both IDEs and switch back and forth. That's what I tend to do quite a bit. All right, that yawn means it's time for a beer. I'm gonna get these groups stood up. I'm doing it this way because like I know I'm gonna have to move all this stuff at some point. Actually, I probably won't. Survey service seems to be the workhorse here. I'm telling you, man, I wouldn't be plugging it if it wasn't worth your time. Rider is worth your time. It is so powerful with and so much more reliable than Visual Studio. This kind of stuff is such a time saver. ID one name. Test group. Test group one dot com. Group photo. This is where things get interesting. This is all coming from the Meetup API. Mock images. Pick some. Lauren, pick some. Is that the one I want? Heck. Ah, yeah, let's just use that. <laughs> Test group one is available. All right. You're buying it. Nice. Love it. 
Okay, so we'll try for square images, I guess. Key photo, I don't know, sure. Next event ID. Yikes. I don't know what any of this stuff is. <laughs> Free advertising when anyone uses your app. Well, only if they're running in mock mode. Lachlan, I don't think you were online when uh, I started the stream. Um, yeah, the, uh, the team at BSI was doing some cleanup to their Azure instance and deleted the whole back end for Raid the Meat. It's gone. Wiped out. So that was fun. I mean, like, I don't really care because the code's open. I don't work there anymore. It's their name on it. So, ah, whatever. Event time. Is this a string? Wow. Febtober. Event link. <laughs> I don't even know what half the stuff is. I really wish I had a way to get data from the, the API and just like paste it in here. Is admin true? Hold on. Event RSVP. Is it an int? I guess this is how completely. Uh, no, we, we've got the code. The code's actually part of what's already been open sourced. Um, but the, the back end, like the actual instance on Azure and the database instance in Azure, all gone. All gone. Bye bye. Good times. Organizers, I can comment that out. URL name. I don't know where this shows up, but. The app is in the App Store. Yep, it doesn't have a lot of downloads, but it's there. There's BSI. It's there. Doesn't have a ton of downloads, thankfully, and nobody has any use for it right now because nobody's doing in-person. Yeah, so it's in the store. It doesn't work anymore. So they're debating now whether they're going to pull it or, um, and you just have no survey data in there. You would have to, uh, you'd just be starting from scratch, but like it pulls in your meetup data and stuff like that. So. Like it's not a huge setback because nobody's actively like using it anyway. Um, any app that's public facing should likely get its own uh, Azure subscription and maybe even its own even tenant. So it could be siloed off. Okay, so we'll start with one group. I'm gonna run this again. Doesn't work anymore and there's no desire like BSI Labs is, it borders on a defunct brand at this point because um, I was the practice lead at BSI Labs. And when I left, they didn't really fill that. In fact, one of the reasons why I left is because this was kind of, uh, the company's focus was, uh, BSI Labs was brought in or was so we had I had delivered one I delivered a mobile app for a client and we went well like this is an interesting market to kind of take on we have all this knowledge built up so let's do it so basically built out a practice public group list built out a practice around uh, delivering mobile apps and um, it went 
it was going relatively well. Um, but the other side of the business, mobile side had got up to about 10 people, but the other side had gotten up to, well, I think it was 60. And um, all the time and effort of the partners was going to the other side of the business. So it was kind of just left adrift. And I was trying to do what I can, and then they threw more responsibility over, and it just was not, it was clear that it wasn't going to be a focus moving forward. So um, no sense trying to push something that nobody had any desire to see succeed. Or, well, that's a little harsh way of saying that, but I, th I feel like you're, you probably get the drift. It wasn't a it wasn't a focal point for the organization. What is going on, Soul here? See if we have that count. So when I left, basically this. Oh wow. Can I find show message in window? Okay, so that's certainly one thing. Um, so I assume this exception is being thrown because get groups doesn't actually return my mock data. That's what's going on there. Anyways, yeah. Um, um, maybe BSI Labs will be revived at some point down the future, like down down the line. I don't I don't really know, but at this point, it's just kind of just kind of there. Task dot from completed from result groups. Get my semicolon in there. This is so like working on a pen. So definitely need to take a look at that that dev loop. Okay, up and running. Cool. There's our our test group. Good stuff. Now. While we're on here, I'm going to take a look at what were we doing here? Ah, Blazor extensions dot show message is actually what we want to use here. So when something breaks, cool. That's a quick little fix. Um, so there's no nothing happening on that link. If we go to about. Nope. Well, we we fixed that one. Current surveys stuff. Edit prize. What's going on? But nothing. Did uh, tokens or keys or anything on there? What else do we have? So minimize this terminal. Bunch of things on here. Uh, oh, here's, here's some bad stuff. Meetup survey dash test. That's really what I should be searching for. Meetup survey dash test. I think that was the last instance that we just cleaned up there. Uh, we've got some sites to publish. Should probably check these ones out. I don't know. That's that's just the launch URI. Cool. Okay, so I think we got rid of the hard coded stuff. We'll just take another quick look through 
through the remainder of these. Make sure there's nothing crazy in here. My groups, the prize page, survey page, we cleaned up. I think we cleaned up all of it. Yep. Survey result. I think this one was cleaned up. Well, no, it wasn't cleaned up. It just had nothing, nothing hard coded. Shared login layout. Ah, here's where things, there's some bad stuff in here. Let's get rid of this stuff. Uh, well, we definitely want to navigate to. Okay, and then we're not actually going to just gonna get rid of that. Actually, I don't think we want to get rid of that. This is the stuff. Okay, so the last thing I want to do, uh, I don't think there's anything else in here. Oh, that's good. Okay, so the last thing I want to do is move my mock survey service into that existing mocks folder. So I actually just want the contents of this. Just copy pasta survey service. So I'm going to go to our mox folder here. I, I really don't think, I think this is generated and I don't think it's referenced anywhere. Okay, so we'll wipe this out, replace this class with our, our actual mocked class. Good stuff. Cool, cool. Next, we can delete this. Good stuff, and then we have to change our imports, or sorry, uh, mocks dot survey service. Is it mocks or mock? Meetup data imp mocks. We'll explicitly reference that namespace. Create type data. What is going on here? We don't have a reference to that. Looks like we don't have a project reference for that. So let's bring that in. And then I think that's that actually for the evening. Add reference data implementation. Okay, I think that's good. Now let's run our app. Doesn't break, I didn't check. I didn't build it in the IDE. Okay. Let's make sure that this still loads up. Home. Yeah, we got our surveys in there. So it's not perfect, still needs some work. Let's take care of a final act here. Going to GitHub. Get it. Under the actual rate the meat project is of course what we didn't commit before. That's pretty much it. That's nice and clean. Okay. So initial laser. Uh, 
Wasm front end. Committing directly to master because that's how I roll. Um, and yeah, let's push that to origin. Rate the meat. There's our nice um, blazer front end. Cool. Okay, so what do we got here? Through. This is an actual app issue, so I'm going to ask Alan about the API client factory. Right now we're mocking things, but at some point we're going to want to use the existing code from this meetup survey data implementation class uh, or uh, namespace, this API client factory class to to fetch data there's a bunch of thread safe stuff in there that i at combined with rx and yeah that's uh tricky i don't understand it notes no notes today okay um lachlan gave some good advice on some of his blazer experience so Cheers for that, Lachlan. Really appreciate that. And I got to look at some Blazor components. So we got to start. Things are there and up and running. And I got to do some homework so I can be a little more effective next session. But uh, I'm not unhappy with how things went tonight. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And um, if you want to check out any of the code that's there uh, on Rate the Meat, there's the, the Xamarin apps. So there's a fully functioning, fully fleshed out, fully thought out, mocked out. So your mileage is going to vary on that. It's just like basically was a, a bit of a test bed. Um, didn't get fully implemented or fleshed out. But uh, it's interesting nonetheless, and it gives you a place to start experimenting. Um, but the iOS and Android apps are very much, the, the back end was destroyed uh, about two weeks ago. But um, uh, we can stand those back up. And we probably will. And we'll probably end up seeing what we can do about transferring these away from BSI, depending on what they want. Or maybe they want it under their name. We'll see. Anyways, uh, thanks for joining, everybody. I uh, really appreciate it. And I hope I'm, I'll be streaming again. Uh, we'll be doing Uno front end using um, the Uno platform. Uno platform is another cross-platform uh, .NET technology. And... Um, the challenge with this is figuring out how we can maximize our shared code across all the platforms that we're going to support. All right. Oh, I'm just on Twitch right now, seeing if there's anybody we can raid. Uh, it doesn't really look like anybody else is streaming at the moment. All right. Have a good night, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Lachlan, have a good morning if you're still sticking around. Thanks for watching.
I am still here. And yeah, let's raid. TBD Gamer. I'll get his feet up here. Yeah, in the experimental. Uh, I just we just tried that before. Um, I've been using Sync Fusion anyway, so I was uh, happy to jump into Sync Fusion. 